Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Power Miners Underground Mining Station set. It was the second most complex and second most expensive of all of the Power Miners sets that LEGO made. It was bested only by the Titanium Command Rig, which I have previously reviewed. Now this is a pretty large, impressive, and interesting looking structure with all sorts of mechanisms that don't necessarily make sense at first glance. But it was really designed, the whole thing was really designed around one specific play pattern. So let me take you through the components of that and then show you how everything comes together. Interestingly, a lot of it actually revolves around this smaller build here for what they call a mining truck. It is a remotely controlled dump truck with a front loader bucket on it. So you can walk right up to it with your figure and operate it by using the two levers on the side there directly. But most of the time it's going to be remotely operated by somebody like this guy over here with the radio unit, which has a, an extra little, little control joystick on it. So he doesn't have to get in the way of any danger, such as rock monsters and other things that you may encounter and other hazards down in the mine. And this actually works pretty well for play because the loader bucket there on the front is right down on the ground. So it's good for actually picking up material. I got just one crystal that time, but so you can bring this up and by using a couple of different points of articulation there, you can dump material directly into the bed. And then from there, you can drive off somewhere and then dump the material from the bed to your destination. You can also use those two functions together because see how this actually raises the bucket up even higher? That's very important. So let me get another load here, get some more crystals in there. Rather than transferring them into the bed here, I'm just gonna raise the whole thing up, use those two functions together, actually rotate right here to get it to angle down a little bit more while still at its maximum height. And you can kind of get it, have to give it a little a little boost there, maybe lift it up at the rear or something, or just use, uh, use momentum a little bit to get some of the material to come out better. But transfer some material into this movable version of a tipper bed. I mean, it's the exact same thing. It's a dump truck bed, just in a different color. But here you get to use the major function of the entire set, all the structure. However, it's going to end up working with this again. See, most of this down here is part of a material transport system to get material safely across a large ravine, or they suggest you could have a, a lava river coming through here or something, just some impassable space that you don't want to be actually traveling over with human beings or even vehicles. But to control that, there's this whole control tower up there. The figures can get access to that by just Walking up here, you got little ladders here, another ladder up here, we've got a nice platform. Some of the crystals that look like they're still embedded into the rocks down below, so that's built up pretty nicely. I like these barbed wire loop pieces. This kind of looks like the, the superstructure of a ship or something, but it's it's more like a like a control station, a, a control room for the whole machine. And I can take this off. So you can see inside there, taking off the roof. So he's got a couple of control panels that this guy is looking at. He's got windows all around so he can, you know, keep a track of everything. There are lots of lights around this whole entire build. And on top of that roof, which had a couple of stickers on it, there aren't too many stickers in this set given its overall size. This is a little defense turret, defense platform. So these are all TNT or dynamite uh, bundles on flick fire missile stems. So each of these can be <laughs> fired off. That went off into the, the corner of my room. And you can change the angle up and down. So you can fire at rock monsters that may be starting to terrorize you a little bit. But the cooler stuff really happens, the mechanism and everything really happens at the other end. Now the other end does have its own kind of office sort of it's up here on this tower, but it's not at all covered up like the other side, and it's much simpler. So this one has just a little panel to keep track of what's going on. It actually has a couple of containers, so you can store some materials in there, one on either side. This is just a searchlight. So the idea is that you would be able to look for rock monsters. You know, you 
always want to be on the lookout for those. Get a couple more of these barbed wire loops here, just acting as a little bit of railing. This is actually a nicely detailed space up here. I like the, the build of it. I like these side contraptions. They, they don't really do anything. But at the core of this, you have a chute. And this whole wheel on the other side, let me show you that from its side. This is actually just a flywheel in this set. It only exists to create some, some momentum that kind of smooths out the action of winding up a string reel. You see that yellow string reel right there in the center. That's directly connected to this. You can also use the, the black colored knob on the other side to control this, but this is connected to the little, little transport, little trolley almost allows you to bring this right up and it's it's so smooth when you let it down see that it, it's nice and it, it keeps its momentum you don't have to keep turning the thing if you give it a good spin it'll just keep going and give you a full cycle let me show you how this works when it gets to the top though this is a really clever mechanism this rubber band is getting stretched as the, the bin there is being tipped it's still trying to pull the whole thing up but it's held partially in place and it's allowed to pivot, which in turn allows it to spill its contents out. And a couple of those crystals made it where they're supposed to go. Goes down through this hopper system, this chute. I'll let you see that a little bit better. So it basically works as a large funnel and material goes in there. And when it gets dumped, it ends up going just out here. That's where you need to have this set up again to be able to catch it. They only have one vehicle in this set and they really didn't make much else in the entire Power Miners line in the way of loaders. So this little vehicle included in this set was a really important thing for the play actions of the entire set, of the entire structure. And that's really what it does. It allows you to get material down here and load it up with this nice flywheel bring it up here dump it and then it goes down to either a pile down here or just directly into this and then this kind of will tend to let itself back down with just the momentum of the big flywheel tries to bring it back a little bit but just settles down the horizontal thing kind of connecting the two major towers of the build is intended to represent a fuel line. So that could be suspended across a ravine or it could be on pylons. You have to use your imagination a little bit for that to get everything to make sense, but it looks good enough and you know, it has a nice amount of detail rather than just being a couple of plates with some regular bricks on top. And then over here, you just have a couple of tools and I intentionally left the wrong color of pickaxe there as a reminder to myself to mention that every single power miner set that I have gotten to date off Bricklink and eBay has had some pieces wrong and or missing. So this one has the wrong color, the older version of gray for the pickaxe. It was also missing one crystal and one of the torsos of the figures was incorrect, but fortunately I was able to swap that out before this review. I have such bad luck though. I buy from really, really experienced sellers and it's very disappointing to basically have to expect stuff to be wrong every single time. Anyway, here are those figures up more closely. The two on the left, so the guy on the left and the, and the middle one, are both versions of the named character Duke. Both of them. So the idea here is that you would just kind of pretend one of them is Duke and the other one is some just generic dude. I mean, they all look close enough. You know, their color schemes are the same and they all look a little bit rough and such. The guy on the right is Rex and he does have his unique torso as each of the named characters did. So the two versions of Duke there get to share their torso piece and this wasn't that long ago when Power Miners was out. They did have these alternate faces to give you some very different expressions for when stuff was going really well or really badly. This is mostly badly, I would say, such as during the time of a 
a rock monster attack. There's just a little bit clearer look at those main faces that are all scarred up. And here is the rock monster that was included with this set. It's called a Geolix with the trans neon greenish yellow color, which I like. I think it really stands out really well. And these were, were cool for, for what they were. Most of the body is one piece. The jaw is not able to open or anything, but you can pose the hands and the arms separately. So you can actually have them do a little high five maneuver if you have a couple of them to each other. And there's also a little bit of action feature built in with a mechanism. It's a very simple mechanism that allows you to raise and lower one arm. Again, very useful for the high five maneuver, but also useful if you offset this, shifting it off so that he can hold something above his head. Now this set doesn't actually include a piece to put there, but if you put a two by two brick or something smaller than that into his hand, and then you push down on the lever on the back, then he'll throw it off. So he can be throwing actual rocks, or you could, I guess, put a crystal in there, although probably wouldn't want to pick one off him, but that is something that's kind of a commodity that's included in the set. So just for the sake of demonstration, and off that goes. Speaking of commodities, here's the last thing in the set, just a little box with a couple of carrots. So, you know, your miners need to be able to have some healthy food, and this helps them to get some vitamins that they're missing out on from being underground all the time. Yeah, it's good for them, and potentially you could hand it off as a snack for a rock monster also. And that's the underground mining station. It has a really nice action feature with the whole big flywheel that has me thinking about things that I could do with that idea in custom terms. And it looks really good. The whole thing, to me, looks really good on display. It comes with a decent selection of figures. That little truck is very useful. I fear it's actually, or was, too useful. It was too important to this set. And it's, again, a little bit of a shame that they did not provide more sets, smaller sets, in the entire line that could perform that sort of function of picking up material or carrying it along. Most of them were just, you know, mining equipment or things to use to, to fight against the rock monsters. So that was needed a little bit more. I think that to get the most out of this set, you would want to bring in some construction sets as well to give yourself some more, some more tipper beds, more dump truck, you know, units, and also more loaders, and especially loaders with a little bit more reach to help work with the bin that's on the conveyor line. But that's it for my look at this set. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I've got more Power Miner sets on my channel already. I believe they're in their own playlist, and I've got a lot more to do to bring you more videos, so stay tuned, and I'll talk to you again soon.